from Global Diplomat College Center here in Greenville, South Carolina. Thank you for welcoming, welcoming us into your homes tonight as we begin this session in Kingdom Teaching. I'd like to thank Pastor Elvira, Ambassador from Manila, Philippines, for being with us. And I'd like to thank the church and the kingdom uh, throughout the rest of the world, in Indonesia, in Arkansas, in Lake City, in China, and here in Greenville. I'm Associate Pastor Jason Webb, Ambassador, and I'd like to ask uh, God's Pastor, Pastor Elvira, to pray over this session tonight. Pastor Elvira? Yes, Kingdom Greetings from Global Diplomat College Center, Manila, Philippines. Let's have a word of prayer. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, King of Glory, Lord God of hosts who was and is and is to come. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. We thank you for this hour of revelation knowledge to the mouth of your holy prophet and ambassador by thy spirit. We ask the Holy Spirit to renew the speed of our minds, open our hearts and receive your word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, the old dominion, power, and might. Amen and amen. And now for our session teaching, coming to you from Global Diplomat College Center, Greenville, South Carolina, USA, Joseph Forbes, God's holy prophet and ambassador. Grace to you from God our Father and the Lord. Jesus Christ. The Bible is not about religion. The Bible is not about democracy. But the Bible is about the King of Glory the kingdom of God and his royal family citizens. I thank all of those who are viewers on YouTube our great appreciation goes to you and we thank you and we thank the pastors here in Greenville and also in Manila, Philippines. We appreciate you so much. Continue to do the kingdom work assignment. Our session today is part two of understanding kingdom precept and philosophy. Understanding kingdom precept and philosophy. Our 
foundational scripture is taken from Malachi 3 and 1. Malachi 3 and 1. Malachi is one of the last book in the Old Testament. And after Malachi, there's the blank page. 400 years of silence, the blank page represent. From the five books of Moses to Malachi is the book of the prophets. Read, I'll read. Malachi 3, 1. I will send my messenger whom will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly, the suddenly, the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant, whom ye desire, will come, said the Lord Almighty. That word Almighty means all powerful. Word Almighty means, see, nothing can, he is all powerful, all knowing. He is king, king of glory. A statement made by this prophet Malachi. I will, God, say I will. The word will mean purpose. It is his purpose to send. The king is speaking this statement. God is king who is Lord. I will send my messenger. Underline that word messenger. That word messenger means envoy. E-N-V-O-Y. Envoy. Also mean ambassador. I will send my ambassador and boy who will prepare the way for me. Heaven is about to get ready to send to earth an envoy ambassador. It is kingdom government assignment. Suddenly, it will happen quick, fast. Suddenly, the Lord, the Lord who is king, whom ye seek, will come to his temple. He will come in his temple. Temple means dwelling place. A bold resident to live. I will come in my temple to live. The messenger of the covenant underlined that. Messenger of the covenant. A covenant is a contract which the king made with his people. A contract which the king of glory made with his people. The word sent mean diplomat assignment. So John the Baptist was sent on a diplomat assignment. He was sent on a diplomat assignment. What is a messenger? 
Messenger is a representation, representative, representative, one who God desired to a diplomat mission or diplomat assignment. A person designated to represent a government, a representation, a representative of a government. An envoy goes to as a host of a country for a mission and one that the mission is over. He must return to his home country. John the Baptist was an ambassador and boy. Every nation has an ambassador representing their country. John the Baptist was a representation for all country on planet Earth. He represents the kingdom of heaven. Glory to God. He represents the kingdom of heaven. An ambassador is the highest ranking diplomat who sent to another sovereignty country, sovereignty country, in order to represent his own country where he originally came from, which is heaven. John the Baptist was sent from heaven to earth as a representation of heaven with an assignment, with a message. He bring a message. Glory to God. Ambassador, the function and power of an ambassador. One, ambassador function is to protect the citizen. Protect the citizen. He also a representation of peace. He worked for peace. Peace is about to come forth. And he represents the peace of heaven. He brings peace to earth. He understands the culture of heaven, the kingdom of God. He understands the culture for he made decision on behalf of the home country, heaven, the kingdom of heaven. Five, he resides in that foreign country whom we sent. He resided there as a diplomat representative in that foreign country for a mission, to a diplomat mission. In other words, John the Baptist, ambassador, his assigning the war. What did he preach? What did he believe? Globally, around the world, you heard the name Baptist. Many times you heard religious group call themselves Baptist. Baptist is the name. John the Baptist is the name of the ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. They call themselves Baptists, but they don't have the belief of John the Baptist. They don't have the same ideology of John the Baptist. But they use the name, but abolish and abandon the teaching. That's, that's dangerous. <laughs> they use the name and abandon his teaching. What message he bring? This is the message the ambassador bring. His message wore one statement. This was his message. Repent. Repent. 
for the kingdom of heaven has at hand. The kingdom of heaven is right now. So before Jesus came, John the Baptist bring the kingdom of heaven. He said the kingdom of heaven is right now. Not tomorrow, but that John the Baptist teach one message, the kingdom of heaven. In other words, he was a master teacher, prophet, ambassador. What did he teach to student? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was the assignment message. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. John the Baptist also teach about baptism. He was the one who baptized in the River Jordan. Baptist, many students and those that came to him to be baptized. The word baptized means to submit under a master teacher or to admit to submit under the embassy of the kingdom of heaven, to be a kingdom citizen in the embassy. When you've been baptized, you mean you, you say, I am submitted to your teaching. I am submitted to what you believe. Folks get baptized and don't know the meaning of baptism. Luke 16, 16. It's a powerful statement. The law, five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, big five books of the law. The law and the prophets was until John ambassador and boy was until John and from that time that dispensation that period of time the kingdom of God has been preached in other words God closed the Old Testament It's the age of the kingdom of God has been preached. And every man, that word man means mankind, mankind, and every man, who, no matter who you are, you are man, every man, everyone, the whole world. Every nation, every man, God created one man. One man, in that one man, there were all men came out of that one man. 7.6 billion humans came out of one man. Jesus God only went to the soil once. And out of that one man, Adam, came all man. Man is called mankind. Human being, mankind. So the Old Testament book is closed. It's what? Close. It's what? Close. Close. Seal. Close. Why? Because the time has fulfilled. John the Baptist, tell to, to, to John the Baptist, the end of John the Baptist, from, 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 from Deuteronomy to Malachi, close the book of the Old Testament, and to the book of the prophet. Then what is come? The kingdom of God. What it is? The kingdom of God. What it is? 
the kingdom, kingdom of, of God. God is being preached. So anything outside the kingdom of God is error. It's false. It's religion. Only one message is coming from the constitution of the kingdom of heaven. Mark 1, 14. No. No. After John, the ambassador, was put in prison, Jesus, Jesus Christ, came to Galilee, the king. This is the Lord. This is the Lord of the covenant. King. Do you know that? The Lord of the covenant came. From that time, the who, who came? The Lord of the covenant. Whom we seek. The messenger of the covenant. Well, not a messenger came. He is the Lord himself. Jesus came into Galilee preaching. What did he preach? The same thing John preached. The kingdom of heaven. John the Jesus said the kingdom of God saying the kingdom of God John 4 17 Jesus from that time Jesus began to preach what? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So Jesus preached the same message John the Baptist preached. No. He said, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, saying, The time has what? Been filled. That's when he said, The Old Testament is being fulfilled. All the prophetic things. That was prophesied. These are the words which I speak with you while I was yet with you. That all things must be what fulfilled, complete, which were written in the law of Moses, five books. The law of no Moses, the psalmist, and the prophet were written concerning who? me. She said, this give them the understanding that they may understand what scripture. And thus is written, and thus is behold Christ, so suffer, died, and rose again, and that repentance and the remission of sin shall be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at what Jerusalem. So Jesus came preaching what? Repent. Repent. For the what? Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Saying the time is fulfilled. The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and what? What is another statement? Repent and believe. What? Believe in what? The gospel. Believe in what? The gospel. Now, I got news. For you religious folk, religious preachers, yes, you deacon, yes, pastor, bishop, evangelist, teacher, church folk, religious folk, I get news for you. This is the news I get for you. Jesus only preached one message. Repent and believe in the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is not the cross. The gospel is not the blood. The gospel is not Calvary, nor the resurrection. The gospel is the kingdom of God. The gospel is the kingdom of God. Paul made a statement in the book of Romans 1.16. You know what he said? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for therein is the power of God unto salvation. 
to everyone that believe. So the gospel is the power of God. Not the cross, not Calvary. In other words, Jesus himself say, I am the resurrection and the life. It's Jesus who died on the cross. So it's not about the cross. Calvary. It's not about, it's not about, it's not about uh, salvation. It's about the kingdom of God. How do you know the gospel is not about resurrection? Jesus made another statement. But if I drive out demons by the spirit of God, then what? The kingdom of God have arrived to you. So the gospel is not the cross, neither the blood. Jesus never tell you to go and preach resurrection. Nor the cross, nor the blood, nor Calvary. But what Jesus preached? The same thing John the Baptist preached. What John the Baptist preached? To what? Kingdom. What did he preach? The kingdom. So your ideology, your belief system should be well in the kingdom. What do you believe? It should be well in the kingdom. Luke 7, 30. But the Pharisee and the expert in the law reject what they did, reject the, reject the purpose of God for themselves. Why? Because, because they neither were baptized by John. See, that was the purpose, the original purpose of God, the baptism of John. Because he had the message from the king and the kingdom. He had envoy. He had the message from the kingdom of God. So you miss God. You miss God's purpose when you don't believe in the baptism of John and the message of John. The message of John was the message of Jesus. Same message John preached, same message the Lord preached. Glory to God, I'm talking to you. Yes, I'm talking to you. Now, what is the message of the covenant? Hebrew 10, 16. Hebrew what? 10, 16. This is the covenant that I will make with to him. This is the covenant, the message of the covenant I will make with them after those days, said the Lord, the King. Make it a covenant. I will put my laws. My what? Laws. Not your religion. Not your church doctrine. Not your church name. Not Baptist, no Catholic, no Anglican, no seven day, but I will put my laws into their heart and in their mind and will write them. I will write them. That's a new covenant. The other covenant Moses made was the Ten Commandments. The law, they're written on stone. But now you shall write it in your heart. New covenant. That is the covenant of the messenger, the Lord. I'm going to write my laws, kingdom law. The laws of the kingdom, not the laws of democracy. Not the laws of theology. Not the laws of ideology. But the law of the kingdom in your heart. And in your minds. And their sins. I will. And their iniquity. I will remember no more. That's powerful. Their sin. And their iniquity. So Jesus already saw sin. When the law get in your heart. 
When the Lord gets in your heart, then sin has to leave. Because the wages of sin is death. It's the law. But the gift of God is eternal life. So when the law reaches in your heart, the Lord's life, sin has to leave. And your sin and your iniquity, I will remember no more. I'll forget it. I'll write it or slip. You'll be clean. Your sin will be washed away. Now, Christianity, you know what they say? Go to the altar. Come and confess your sin. And you heard it before? Let us pray. Go to the altar and weep and cry. Hot and moon, groom, tears, crocodile tears come out of God. Crying, Lord, come to my heart. Lord, save me, crying. Oh, help me, Lord. That's what Christianity do. But the, but the kingdom don't do that. What the kingdom do? Write the Lord's God say. In a covenant, you have with God. I will write the laws on where? Their heart and in their mind. In other words, for you to change your mind, his mind got to be changed. In other words, after man think in his heart, so is he. You have to deal with the man thinking his mind. His mind. So is what he. Now, the word pre, pre, set. Let's break that word down. We break the word to pre. pre. The word pre, R E, means before. Mm -hmm. The word pre means what? Before. And the word set means thought or idea. So before the idea, thought before the idea. It means original thoughts. Thoughts before the idea. A precept produce a Concept. A precept what? Producer what? Concept. A concept is an idea. Now, if your concept is wrong, your thought will be wrong and all your ideas will be wrong. Now, what do Christianity and religious group teach? Matthew 15 and 9. This is what I teach. But in wind do they worship me. Teaching what? For doctrine. The commandment of man. Human ideology. Human thoughts. They teach human thoughts. Precept. Human precept. Human laws. Not kingdom law. He said I have a right my law. My idea in your heart and in your mind. So, precept produce what? Concept. And concept is an idea. It's a what? Idea. So, we got the word free, the original idea. And in concept, an idea produce your belief system. Your what? Belief system. Every human on planet Earth has a what? Belief system. Now we'll deal with the belief system. This is the first statement when John the Baptist came, he addressed. Belief system. Repent. That's a belief. Repent. That's to change your mind, your mind. That's where your belief system in your mind. Repent. Change your what? Mind. Why? Because the kingdom has arrived. A new government has came. Kingdom government came to the earth. So repent because what? Kingdom government came to the earth. What? Repent. Why? Because kingdom government came to the earth. Now, belief system. 
What is the belief system? Belief system is principle. We're together, form a basis. Principle which together form the basis of religion or philosophy or mental code. It forms a principle which together form the basis of religion, religious and philosophy. Moral code. That's what it forms. Now, let us see here. Every human, every human being has a what? Belief system. Every what? Human being has a what? Belief system. When you're born as a baby and you grow as a child and you get the age of 12, and on you have a what belief system. Now, what is a belief system? What is what it is? Ambassador Joseph, tell me, explain to me, define what is a belief system. A belief system. It's the power of belief. A belief system is the power of belief. What is a belief system? A belief system is the what? Power of belief. Power of belief that causes the thing, something to happen in our lives. It is your power of your belief cause something to happen in life. For example, you wake up in the morning, you say, I'm putting my clothes on, I'm going to work. Do you believe that? That comes out of your system. You say, I'm going to the food store, buy some food. Do you believe you go in there, that's your system. Everything that you think and all your ideas are your what belief system. It's the power, power that caused the thing to happen in your life. Most people define belief system as an inward conviction or feeling about what is something about or what it means. Most people, no, no, that are what you hold there. And rooted deeply within yourself. A belief system is something you hold dearly in your heart. And you take a root, it becomes a strong hold. Root in your heart. Belief system, both in moral and moral, moral and what? Emotion. Moral and emotion. So, in other words, all of the teaching you had in religion, it went in what? Your belief system. Everything that those religious preachers preach to you from the time you go into their church, all of those years, you adopt their teaching. And whatever they teach you, that's what you become. As the man think well in his heart, so is the man. So that's why many people in Christianity say I'm a Christian. Why? Because they were taught that. Many Christians say, I believe in the resurrection. I believe in the cross. I believe in Calvary. They were taught that. Many Christians say, I believe in the rapture. They were taught that. That's in their belief system. And when the kingdom come to them and introduce to them, they shut down. Why? Because they they have a stronghold. You are breaking through stronghold. They did not open up for the kingdom. The doors are shut. The pastor's the same way. The reverend's the same way. The deacon's the same way. 
every member of the church to see you with. Shut down. That's the attitude, the mindset of the Pharisees, the scribe. Their belief system was wrong. Their idea was wrong. So when Jesus came with the kingdom, they shut down. They reject the message. That's what happened in the day. Because the belief system is wrong, the whole ideology and philosophy is wrong. That's powerful. Glory to God. Now, Matthew 4, 17, from the time Jesus began to preach, repent the mind, your belief system. Change the way you believe. Change all of those teaching, religious parts that teach you. Repent. Get rid of it. Why? Because the kingdom has come, has arrived. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, Mark 1, 38. This could destroy all of your religion. <laughs> this is going to destroy all of your religion you ever believe about Jesus. How Christianity and folk, Christian, think about Jesus. No, let me just tell you something. Why Jesus came. Why do you think he came? I'm going to show you. Let's see for ourselves. <laughs> Are you ready, boy? Let's see why he came. <laughs> Look one and thirty-eight. And he said to them, Let us go into the neighboring town and city that I may preach also there. For this, for this is the purpose why I came forth. This is what purpose. You see that? Why I came. So why did he came? Came for the kingdom. <laughs> for, for, for the kingdom came for the cross. What he came for? To preach the kingdom. So the kingdom is the greatest and only message Jesus came. Now, what is the kingdom? The kingdom is a government. God's government. Kingdom government from heaven. It's heaven government. Heaven is what? A country. An invisible country. And all countries are the what? Government. So is heaven. Invisible king. Invisible government. You can't see the king. You can't see the government. So where the government? Pharisee and religious folk get a problem with it. They're looking for it. Where's the kingdom? What's it on? Where the kingdom? <laughs> where is the kingdom? Well, the kingdom is unseen. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but a righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom is in the Holy Ghost. You can't see him. Now, the king is invisible, so is the kingdom. Visible king, what? An invisible kingdom. It's a government. That's a government. Government. Led by a king. Not led by religion, <laughs> led by a what? King. Glory to God. That's powerful, huh? It's a government led by a king. So when you're talking to Christians and you're explaining the kingdom to them, they shut down on you. Why? Why do they shut down? They shut down because what they believe, what they have been deposited in their heart. Now, a man is like a computer. You have on they have a you have a laptop computer or you have the the, the, the you have the keyboards. In India, you have what inside the computer, you have the hard drive. And what download? You got to download it on the hard drive. When you go to the hard drive, what happened? It's stored in. Now, all those teaching Christianity have stored in them. So when the truth of the kingdom come, what happened? They shut down. It become a stronghold. Now, I'd rather teach a sinner who never had that teaching and win him. A sinner, you could win a sinner and a business person to the Lord or government person to the Lord quicker you win a Christian to the kingdom. Because he shut down. Him and his pastor lock up. The pastor locked the door. Shit and robbed the Christian out of the kingdom. 
The only message Jesus preached, they've been robbed, they've been cheated out. Now, I don't hardly watch those programs. They're entertainment, they're show. They're what you call stage actor. They're like going to a movie. That's all they do. When you're preaching the kingdom, you're stage actor. What are you preaching? Performing. And the Lord of the world, Lord for performing. And everybody taken with the with spirit, and everybody taken with the soul and the trembling. You need to sit down, get your mind right. <laughs> you need to sit down, get your mind right. Your mind is wrong. Your belief system is wrong. Shit! Get your what? My mind right. Oh, you have trouble tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel good tonight. Okay. Now, yeah. The kingdom of God is the only message Jesus preached. He made a statement. I must preach the kingdom of God because this is the promise I was sent. Jesus explained how to live in the kingdom of God and how the kingdom of God work. It is different than the things in the world. The kingdom of God operate different from the world, from the church and democracy. It's different. It's different. In other words, I'll explain to you. In democracy, you have a president. You have a senate. You have a congress. But in the kingdom, the king is the senate. <laughs> he is the congress. <laughs> And he is the law. So when he speaks, his word becomes law. And that's a different, show different. He ain't no hope on the king. When the king says, if the king says adultery is sin, that's what it is, it's a sin. If the king says you're a liar, that's what it is, you're a liar. You don't be baked on it. You don't be baked on the word. God's word is already settled in heaven. So you can't debate it. I'll show you another way. The difference in the kingdom and democracy and the church is this. That in the kingdom, there's no homosexuality. No homosexual. None, none. None at all. You cannot go on homosexuality in the kingdom. If the kingdom says homosexuality is sin, that's what it is. You can't vote on it. Now, in the church, they vote on the bishops. Most bishops and deacons are homosexuality. In many reformation that have homosexual priests and bishops. In many churches. They vote on it. They vote on the pastor to do this and the pastor to do that. In the kingdom, you can't vote on it. Whatever the words say, that's how it is. It's a difference. So the king is different from any other government. Why? Because the king is what? Born king. The people do not vote in the king, but he's born king. You can't vote in Jesus Christ. He's born, <laughs> he's born king. Let's say he's born king. born king. Born king. Even today, we need to be taught about the kingdom. Life and experience. The kingdom has kingdom life and what? Experience. I'll define that as we go forward. So go with me in this journey. We need to understand the kingdom principle. Principle is a group of laws that govern you. Now, when a manufacturer makes a product, first thing you do what? You place the law in it. Now, those who drive cars, you drive a car, but there's a law in driving the car, there's many laws. The first law, so when you drive a car, in your glove compartment, you open it up. What do you can find? Mm -hmm. A manual. What the, what the manual is? The manual is the mind of the manufacturer of the car. What the manual is? Mind. The mind of the mm -hmm. manufacturer in the car. Now, I want to get something to you here. Psalms. 
You are good. And do good. Teach me your statue. The proud. The proud have what? Lie against me. But I will. I will. Keep your precept. I will what? Keep your precept. With my whole heart. I will keep your precept in my what? Heart. Proverbs 3, 23. As a man think in his heart. So is what? So is the man. Glory to God. On behalf of Global Diplomat College Center, this is Joseph Forbes, God Holy Prophet, Ambassador, by the will of God, now to Pastor Webbs, the Associate Pastor, Global Diplomat College Center. Go ahead, Pastor Webbs. session tonight and uh, that verse in Proverbs was chapter 23 and 7 for as he thinketh in his heart so is he praise God um, amen, amen. I'd just like to uh, speak this message comes from the foundation of the kingdom is love and so to everyone out there who who's battling with homosexuality and who is seeking the Lord and the Lord is seeking after them we we know that your mind, it, you're fighting your own thoughts. We understand that. We understand there's a battle inside of you. And I'm speaking directly to your heart right now because you know in your heart that, that you continue to have these battling thoughts. You know, and it, is this right? I've, I've talked to numerous people with this issue, and the, the only answer I have for you is deliverance. I myself was in need of deliverance before. Um, I came into the kingdom, deliverance out of religion, deliverance out of uh, different sins, different things in my life that God was working on. We don't hate you or dislike you. We we desire you. We want you to come into fellowship because we want you to receive this truth. We want your deliverance. Jesus loves you. We love you. So anything that we're saying is not hard toward you. It's for your benefit. And I know there's many of you out there who are battling. Like I said before, that the thoughts are coming against you and, and you have questions. And, and But really, what we're offering you isn't answers to your questions, but deliverance. Because the kingdom is not in word, but in power and in deed. And Jesus Christ Amen. Amen. wants to deliver you even now where you are. So... We love you, and this, this word on precepts and concepts, the precept is the original idea of God. The originator had an original idea, and that became a concept, his thought, what he has for us, his plan for us. Um, we love you, and I'm going to release this over to Pastor Elvira, if she would pray over this session. Pastor Elvira? Yes, our Heavenly Father. We thank you for this revelation of understanding kingdom precepts and philosophy. We thank you for the gospel of the kingdom to make us know and keep your precepts and philosophy and that we have to repent, 
change our hearts mm-hmm. and believe in our hearts. And that, Father, we pray, we just ask continually the Holy Spirit to give the Holy Prophet Joseph Forbes revelations after revelations of this kingdom truth that we might be continually learning and having the understanding of your laws and of your ways and that you write it, Father, into our hearts and into our minds, of oh God, that we will have only the belief system downloaded into our hearts, stored in our minds, so we can keep it. For understanding and knowledge comes only through your word and you honor your word above your name. I would thank you for restoring us these precepts and making us know the mysteries of the kingdom of God to the mouth of your holy prophet and ambassador which you have raised at this time, Lord, that the world is full of chaos, that the world is full of deception, yes. that the world that, that the people you created have been deceived, yes. have been in error, have been taught by lies, but now, Father, the kingdom has survived, and we can see the truth, and we can see the light to the knowledge of the gospel of the kingdom of God. Let it shine forth, let the glorious gospel of the kingdom of God shine forth, and let thy kingdom come on earth, and thy will be done. To the name that is above every other day, that all people must bow. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the Lord of lords and the King of kings, to whom be all glory, dominion, power, and might. Amen and amen. Amen, Lord. Get a little music go, you know. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'd just like to add to the religious um, people who are hearing this and the, the Baptists, the Christian, the Catholics. You can go to your pastors, your bishops, you can go to your leaders and ask them one question. What is the gospel? You can take this message tonight that Joseph has pre- has taught, this session, and you can go through the scriptures of Matthew 4.17, Mark 1.15, um, Luke 16.16, 16, Matthew 3.1. Romans 14, 17. You can go through these scriptures and you can find this gospel that Jesus preached. It's all over his word. It's the only message he preached. And I guarantee you, when you ask your pastors or your leaders what the gospel is, they will not give you a clear definition. They will not give you the definition that Jesus has given in his word, that God has given, because they don't know it. And we're not coming against them and and, and your church. What we're saying is, You have the wrong precept, and with the wrong precept, you get the wrong concept, and then you live in error. You all think that you're servants, but God wants to make you sons and daughters. You have an inheritance, and you have a responsibility on the earth, and you're shucking your responsibility if you don't search into this. If you don't look into this, you are being a lazy believer, and that is not going to work for God. This, this this is a new season. Yes. You can no longer sit on your pew. You can no longer sit and listen, but you're going to have to get in this word and you're going to have to receive revelation from the Holy Spirit. And you've got to seek it. So I just wanted to say that to all the lazy Christians. It's time to read the book. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. And may God bless you and your family. And may God bless the United States, this great country of America, and every city of America, city to city. May God bless the United States of America. May God bless the Asian nation and all the nations of the world. Till next session, God bless you. We love you. As the pastor said, Pastor Jason Wells, we love you. Global Diplomat College Center. God bless you. God bless you.